Hello everyone, my name is Cliff and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome and enjoy. Uh, this is Cliff's Dark Gems. Today I am going to be doing my March TBR. I am going to be breaking this video up into three parts. First of all, I am going to be looking at some readathons that I have joined in with. Uh, second, I am going to be doing the part of my TBR that I am going to prioritize above all else. And then at the end, two books that I will get to if I get the chance. Stay tuned. First of all, just a reminder from the last video that I'm still busy reading Zombie. I'm hoping to finish this within the next uh, three or four days so that I can get on with my TBR proper. The main readathon I'm going to be joining this month is The Week of Weird, which is created by Crystal from Fiberati and co hosted by Jason from Jason's Weird Reads. Uh, now I'm going to do the prompts as much as possible. I will try and get to all of them, uh, but my main the main book that I'm looking to take part in with in terms of this readathon is China Mill Marvel, I think it's Marvel, uh, Purdy Doe Street Station. Uh, now this is also a mammoth book, uh, over 860 pages long, so I think two birds with one stone. Uh, this is also the March of the Mammoth. Uh, so this is basically two readathons this month that I'll be taking part in. Now, Perdido Street Station sounds like a very weird, very fantastical mix of science fiction, fantasy, a little bit of horror, um, and it really does look completely unique. I'm going to read the, uh, the back cover just to give you an idea of what it's about. The metropolis of New Crozer Buzen sprawls at the center of the world. Humans and mutants and arcane races brood in the gloom beneath the chimneys where the river is sluggish with unnat unnatural effluent and factories and foundries pound into the night. For more than a thousand years, the parliament and its brutal militia have ruled here over a vast economy of workers and artists, spies and soldiers, magicians, junkies and whores. Now a stranger has arrived with a pocket full of gold and an and, and impossible demand, and inadvertently, clumsily, Something unthinkable is released. As the city becomes gripped by an alien terror, the fate of a million lies with a clutch of renegades and outcasts on the run from lawmakers and crown lords alike. The urban nightscape becomes a hunting ground. Battles rage in the shadows of uncanny architecture and a reckoning is due at the city's heart under the vast chaotic vaults of Perdido Street Station. So just from reading the back, it sounds like this book is very, very weird and I think it fits the criteria. I also found two uh, older horror compilations, Spine Chillers and Great Tales of the Supernatural, which contain a great number of short stories that I think could fit the bill as well. These stories are by Blackwood Algernon, uh, Guy Du Maupassant, Elizabeth Bowen, M.R. James. Clark Ashton Smith and a number of others. I also think that if I haven't completed everything I might go shopping again to see if I can find some more weird fiction uh, but I'm really looking forward to taking part in this readathon. And I'm also going to continue my adventures with uh, Ed McBain 87th Precinct. Last night I finished Killer's Choice uh, which I was not particularly excited about. It is probably the weakest of all the books I've read so far it was kind of predictable, uh, but at the same time, something good happened. There's a new law enforcement officer, a new detective called Cotton Hawes, and a really bad guy got one of the bad cops got murdered. Um, and I'm kind of glad to see the back of him because he was brutal. He used to take uh, prisoners into the interrogation room and beat them senseless before even asking any questions. So I think a lot of readers were glad to see the back of him. The next one in the series is Killer's Payoff, uh, where Blackmailer is killed and it's uh, uh, Detective Corelli and Cotton Hawes 
and they go in search of the killer. Unfortunately, they are from the back. It seems that there are absolutely no clues, so this makes their life much more difficult. But I'm looking forward to continuing in the series, and I hope this is better than the last one. Uh, next, I want to continue my Stephen King adventure, uh, and I want to go with Duma Key by Stephen King. Now, I did DNF this book in the past, um, and as I mentioned, I was actually enjoying it. I think sometimes you're just in the wrong headspace, uh, things are not going your way, and you're called to maybe doing something else, and so I left this book somewhere in the middle. Um, I'm really looking forward to giving it another go. It's about a man, Edgar Fremantle, and he has a terrible accident where he loses his right arm. His brain gets scrambled to the point where he becomes aggressive towards his wife. He kind of loses everything. His wife leaves him. And the psychologist that's looking after him suggests that he goes and gets some therapy and takes up a hobby and moves to a secluded place. So he goes to Dumaki, uh, which is a little island, uh, apparently very tranquil, with the water lapping up onto the sand. And he starts painting. And the more he starts painting, strange things start to happen. Now I'm really looking forward to carrying on with this book um, because I know that I could have carried on, I could have really enjoyed it. I think it was probably getting to a little bit of a turning point. So that is Dumaki. Okay, next we've got something a little bit fun. One of those 70s horror uh, vintage paperbacks that I bought recently. And that is Slugs by Sean Hudson. Now, from what I see, that this book has very little plot. It really is just about uh, killing off these individuals in creative ways. I mean, I can understand rats, I can understand bats, uh, but slugs, surely you can just run away. I mean, I can only imagine what this author does to get, uh, I suppose, a gaming thing, slug kills. Um, so it should be a lot of fun. Um, yeah, I don't think there's any plot to it at all. Uh, it's just that these slugs start developing a taste for human flesh. Don't know how that's possible, but let's wait and see. Okay, next we have Brian Lumley Necroscope. Now uh, this is one that's been on my shelf for a long time. And one of my viewers uh, left a comment in the section below uh, suggesting I read this book, recommending this book, and I'm going to give it a go. I know it's part of a long series. I made a mistake in one video and I said it was part one of four. I think apparently there's up to like 15 of these books. Um, I know it's to do with uh, Russian, uh, I think they're called necroscopes, or necroscope, and he's using his power for evil, and he's actually having conversations with this vampire. And then there's a British uh, necroscope, I'm not sure what they're actually called here, uh, seems like that. But anyway, he's using his power for good. And there it becomes a battle of good versus evil and supernatural and the raising of the dead. And I mean, that's what I gather from the back. But it sounds like a hell of a lot of fun. And I think if I really enjoy this, I'm just going to try and pick up the rest of the series and go with it. And it's necroscope. And how's this work cover? Okay, the last book that I absolutely want to get to this month is Graham Masterson. Famine. Uh, now my wife has been raving about this book and she's read a lot more Grand Master than me. So I'm looking forward to this. It is basically America on the brink of starvation. Crops are failing. Um, so it's not so much a post-apocalyptic as more apocalyptic what's actually happening to the country. And as the people start starving, from what I gather, um, they start behaving in more barbaric ways towards each other. And there's this desperation and basically to the brink of absolute catastrophe. So this looks like a fun read. I really enjoyed Mirror um, and I'm intent on reading more Grand Masters in this year as well. That is famine. Okay, next we have the books that I would like to get to. If I don't, I'm not too concerned, but I would really like to get to these next two books. And the first is John Fowles, The Collector. Now this has to do with a kind of uneducated, unloved, lonely man whose passions include photography and collecting butterflies. And he's granted an opportunity because I think he wins money, he wins a pool, and he buys this big estate. 
and he's given the opportunity because uh, he's obsessed about his beautiful woman so he abducts her and he leaves her in the cellar with just with the thinking that one day she'll grow to love him uh, which is creepy very creepy and uh, no um, I don't think that's going to happen I think the first part of the story is told from his perspective and then it kind of switches to her perspective as well um, but I'd love to get to this book either this month or next month and finally I'd like to continue my Ray Bradbury adventure I've uh, read so many of his novels and sto short stories and I've come across another book called The Day It Rang Forever um, this is short stories and even if I during this month just dip into one or two or three or four and enjoy them I'll be happy with that and yeah I might do this over the next two months because short stories sometimes it's not a, the best thing just to read the whole book in one go it's just a dip in when you feel like it dip your toes in okay everyone that's my March TBR I'm really hoping to get to all of that and then I will give you some good feedback on the books that I've read I hope you enjoyed that uh, take care and keep those pages turning cheers <laughs>